Terrible Carnivorous Caterpillars Catch Insects Caterpillars can appear scary, especially up close, but because most eat leaves, flowers and your favourite share, but carnivorous caterpillars sound like something out of a horror movie. But yes, you heard that right, there are caterpillars who are actually carnivorous. While these caterpillars will not harm you, they will eat other insects, which is an unusual diet for normally vegetarian caterpillars. I had to include this because it's both creepy and mind-boggling to consider a carnivorous caterpillar. Remember, if you see a caterpillar that is very hairy or spiky, you should probably avoid touching it until you are certain of the species. So in this video, we will discuss a terrible carnivorous caterpillar that catches insects as well as how a caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. Don't go anywhere. If you think you'll never go into a garden again, good for you. These creatures are only found on the Hawaiian Islands, which is fortunate if you don't live there. This behavioural evolution is a mystery. These are not herbivores who scavenge for extra nutrients on the side as giraffes do. Insects are their sole source of nutrition. When they chew on leaves, they don't even swallow what they've bitten off. These caterpillars on the other hand use the hole they create to anchor themselves for attacks. Caterpillars exhibit characteristics of convergent evolution. They have spider-like characteristics such as spinning webs to catch snails. Nonetheless, because Hawaii is abundant in arachnids, it's unknown why caterpillars choose to live in a similar ecological niche. There and nowhere else. Though the absence of other predators such as praying mantises is likely to play a role. Aside from the snail catcher, the caterpillars are from the genius Eupithica, which is found all over the world but is vegetarian elsewhere. Although a small number of Hawaiians Eupithica feed on flowers, meat-eating behaviour has been observed in nearly 20 species across all Hawaiian islands since the 1980s. These caterpillars lay in ambush by attaching one end of themselves to the surface of a plant. When an unsuspecting insect brushes against the bristles on the caterpillar's lower half, it whips around and catches its prey with its claw-like legs. These caterpillars have sharp setae body bristles and claws that allow them to pierce their prey's exoskeleton and even harmful creatures like wasps and spiders can become a meal. Caterpillars capture their prey with elongated spiny legs by bending the front of their body backwards in a very quick strike. The strike which only takes about 1 12th of a second. Because the strike is triggered by physical contact rather than sight, the caterpillar can carry out its ambush even in complete darkness. A diet rich in protein rich flower pollen and a defensive snapping behaviour may have prepared Hawaii's lineage Eupithica for a shift in predation. Severe barriers to the dispersal of mandates and other continental insect predators into Hawaii create an environment that's favoured behavioural and consequent morphological adaptions that produce these unique insects known as grappling inchworms. The majority of the damage to native biota and habitat is caused by imported species or biological pollution, creating a critical need for protective management. Now, how does a caterpillar become a butterfly? While school children are often taught from an early age about how caterpillars wrap themselves in a cocoon and then undergo metamorphosis, some details are not always clarified. This is due in part to the complex biological processes at work, as well as the fact that those processes can be quite gruesome. To make matters more complicated, it's difficult to observe the chrysalis process without disturbing it. So we're still learning more about the stages of metamorphosis as new research is published. Still, the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly is one of nature's most fascinating transformations. All butterflies begin as tiny eggs about the size of a pin, which female butterflies deposit in small clusters on leaves. Eggs typically gestate for about a week or two before hatching into butterfly larva. Almost all insect species go through larval stages. Maggots, for example, are the common name for fly larvae. Butterfly larvae, also known as caterpillars, are more entertaining than the majority of their peers. Caterpillars are notoriously voracious eaters, consuming grass, leaves and other plant material as they grow up to a thousand times their birth weight. While some species binge and explode in a matter of weeks, others take longer. 
the wood-eating carpenter worm is a caterpillar that can take up to three years to mature. Each caterpillar is eating to prepare for the next stage of its life cycle, when it will use those calories to power a startling transformation. They then spend almost the entire stage feeding. Caterpillars are feasting to prepare themselves for chrysalis, much like bear gaining body fat in preparation for hibernation. The body they begin with will also be insufficient for the task. The typical caterpillar will molt four or five times during this stage of its life cycle, which is an amazing metamorphosis in and of itself. A monarch caterpillar can grow up to 100 times its original size before entering the chrysalis over the course of two to six weeks. Many will even take on drastically different appearances as they swap exoskeletons. The menu of butterfly caterpillars is also fairly consistent. The majority of caterpillar species are vegetarians. The majority of their diet will consist of leaves and the monarch caterpillar can easily consume 20 leaves per day. The goal is to get as much protein as possible before chrysalis. And while most butterflies aren't picky about what they eat, some have adapted to be more specialised in their diets. Monarch caterpillars are entirely dependent on milkweed plant families, whereas a few different caterpillar species are carnivores. The North American harvester butterfly and the Hawaiian eupithica or killus are two species that hunt insects ranging from aphids to cockroaches to flies. Herbivore caterpillars on the other hand pose a far greater threat to humans. Because their voracious appetite, they pose a seasonal threat to farmers and gardeners. Butterflies will eventually play an important role in pollinating plants and maintaining ecosystem health but they will need to conserve a lot of energy to get there. Most butterfly species will spend more time preparing for chrysalis than they will spend in chrysalis. Most caterpillars will continue to feed for two to five weeks, depending on the species, availability of food sources and potential threats. The hormone ecdosine initiates the various molting processes and this along with the lagging levels of a different chemical known as juvenile hormone instinctively leads the caterpillar away from its food source and towards a more secluded environment where they can enter chrysalis with the greatest chance of survival. While it may not appear much to the naked eye, incredible processes are taking place in the motionless casement. The caterpillar will completely decompose on a cellular level before reorganising into a new form. The end result is an adult butterfly that emerges from its exoskeleton after several weeks. The process of transformation begins when a butterfly sheds its last exoskeleton, revealing the shiny and solid body shell beneath known as chrysalis. This chrysalis is essentially a hardened armour that surrounds the butterfly pupa and is made from the protein they've consumed. Things start to get a little gross at this point. When butterflies reach this stage of life, they spend the majority of their time looking for a mate, and they may not have much time. Many butterfly species live for less than a month after reaching adulthood. When butterflies find a mate, they lay another batch of fertilised eggs and the cycle begins again. Nature favours organisms that maximise energy usage for expenditure, but butterflies show that hard work is sometimes worthwhile, because while the process of maturation is dangerous, laborious and biologically complex, the importance of butterflies as plant pollinators make it worthwhile. So what do you think? Isn't that incredible? 